today we're going to talk about uh, the Canon C70s and we'll talk first a little bit about why we use those as our workhorse uh, production cameras for basically everything that we do and, uh, and then we'll talk specifics of how we build out a C70 rig and then we'll build one out. Um, before I do that, I want to show you uh, this is the rig we're going to build today. Uh, there's our other C70 uh, with the Sigma 35 F1.4 on it. And there's Jeremy. And then there's uh, an R5 with the 100 millimeter macro for our gear shot. Um, so uh, we just recently recorded a podcast where we talked about, Jeremy and I, where we talked about uh, how we ended up in the C70 world. And uh, I would encourage you, if you're interested in how we got here, to go give that a listen because uh, between Jeremy and I, we've we've had virtually every modern uh, cinema or cinema-oriented camera. Um, and the C70s have just been what works for us. And uh, we've had full-frame cameras, we've had crop sensor cameras, um, we've had a little bit of everything. And so today we're gonna talk about how we build out the C70s and uh, and then go through the gear specifically. So let's hop right into that. Uh, so first off, obviously, uh, this is our good C70. Um, we say good because this is the one that didn't fall and hit uh, the floor very hard on top of a slider. Um, quick note, if you're, if you're setting up a sliding shot, don't ever walk away from it until you've seen that it can handle the weight on one side. The other, the other C70, which is filming now, is proof that it's fine. Um, but it, there is a little tiny little separation in the body. But honestly, I think that's like proof of how tough they are. That camera hit the ground really hard and uh, it's still doing great. So yeah, this is the C70. Uh, you'll notice we have removed all the ports or the port covers. The ports are still there. Uh, we just removed the covers. Um, we just find that they get in the way and um, like we don't film in like extreme weather where there's lots of moisture anyway. Uh, most of the stuff we do is going to be indoors if it's wet outside. Uh, and if we are outdoors, it's not in extreme conditions like that, at least not for me. Um, and so, and plus what you'll see after we rig this camera up is that uh, the vast majority of these ports are in use when we build out our rig. So uh, there's especially no point and us having the port covers. We do keep the original uh, Canon hand grip thingy on there because uh, oftentimes once it's rigged, we sort of use it uh, like that. We use the original grip and the original grip feels fantastic. To me, it just feels like a bigger R5 grip, uh, like a thicker R5 grip um, or even EOS R grip for that matter. Uh, we do, you, you may be laughing because you see these Peak Design uh, anchors on here. Believe it or not, with all of our cinema rigs that we build out, if, if they're this size-ish, um, we do have a, a big, thick, like one of the two inch wide Peak Design straps that like we'll throw on our neck just so that if we're like filming B-roll at an event or something, um, we can still use our hands and talk to our clients and have the camera. It's not nice to have a, you know, massive heavy rig around your neck, but for a couple seconds, it can be helpful. Or the classic, like use it as another point um, of stabilization if you're trying to handhold a shot and get it super stable. Um, you'll notice we do have the uh, Canon speed booster on here. Um, and we don't have the little brackets that hold it on permanently because we use uh, mostly EF glass, but we do use some RF glass as well. And so, but most of the time I would say the, um, the speed booster stays on our cameras. And we've had great luck. We have, we have them on both cameras. You're seeing uh, the 0.71 speed booster on the other C70 that's filming me now with the Sigma 3514. So that's a good example of uh, sort of the quality of that um, glass and the speed booster because everyone knows the quality of the Sigma Arc stuff. Um, so otherwise, we've got we got the speed booster, we've got the body, we've got the anchors, we've got a shape bottom plate on here, a 15 millimeter rod plate. Um, 
and it's two pieces, one piece bolts to directly to the camera with two bolts and then the other uh, bolts to that plate with four Allen bolts. Um, from there, we do, I'm gonna throw it in here. The first piece uh, is the included BPA-30 Canon battery. Um, what you're gonna see as we get into our build here is that uh, we actually use V-mount power, um, which we went back and forth on, but uh, A, we already had a V-mount set up for our previous camera packages, and so it just made the most sense to continue down that road. Um, instead of going and selling all our V-mounts and buying a bunch of BPA batteries. Um, but the way that we build it out with the BPA-30 in there, uh, it, we, it makes the camera hot swappable. So we could we can pull, pull depending on how we have the rig set up, most of the time we can pull a V-mount off, put a new one on, and this battery sort of takes over in the meantime. Um, yeah, so let's go over some of the gear on the table here before we get it too much further into the, to the setup. So I've sort of got it uh, set out in a way that we can see categories here. So we've got hardware here, batteries here, which we had the BP th BPA-30. We've got audio here. This is considered hardware, so it should probably be over here. Um, we've got the Ninja, which we don't record to the Ninja V other than for backup purposes if we ever do. Uh, we use it mainly as a monitor, again, because it's what we had and there was no point in um, going and spending more money on a monitor. Um, this is DTAP power for the, the monitor, for the camera, and for our wireless transmitter, which is just the cheap Mars 300 Pro, I think is what it was. I think when, I don't know if they even sell these anymore. When they did, uh, I want to say they were like $299. Awesome. A couple tools here. The cards that we use, uh, we're gonna put those in the camera. We use uh, Extreme Pro SanDisk cards. They are the 300 megabyte, megabyte per second versions, uh, 128 gig. And what is it, Jim? We get like 60 minutes of the highest codec in 4K. So. It's like 56 minutes at 10-bit, uh, 422, all intro, 3840 by 2160 4K. Um, and you can, you can keep two cards in the camera. And then so you get, you know, almost two hours, um, which we find that we mostly use that codec uh, unless it's really long form. And then we back down up, uh, back down to like the 4208 bit uh, stuff. Or maybe it's 4210, but I don't remember. Anyway, so we keep those two cards in the camera and uh, we're good to go. So, I think we're ready to try to build something out here. So first thing is our rods, obviously. This plate is nice in that it just has one uh, like thumb nut situation that tightens both sides. Um, that works out well. These, these rods are small rig, the cheap ones. Uh, I think we couldn't decide if they were seven or eight inches and we did not get the tape measure out. So there's some where there, I think they're seven or eight inch 15 millimeter rods, you can get them, I think they're like $8 for a pair of them. We have some longer ones too, but we find that these end up being the perfect, um, these end up being the perfect length for what we need. So I'm putting obviously most of the length of the rods out behind the camera because that's where most of our rigging is gonna happen. One other cool thing that I didn't know about the C70 that we realized after picking them up is that they they ship with AC power. And so a uh, little port on the back here, um, if we're doing studio stuff, you know, especially over the course of a few days or something, if we're filming in the exact same scenario, we just throw wall power to the cameras and don't think at all about power, which is really, really nice. Uh, the second thing we do, again, we've already got our BPA-30 in there. And so uh, we, that's important because you can't get it out once you mount the V-mount, uh, unless you want to loosen the V-mount, which we don't. Our one complaint about the C70s, if we have one, is the screen. And that's what everyone says, uh, and we would definitely back them up on that. The C70 screen is, uh, maybe it's not even the screen that is the issue, maybe it's the hinge. The hinge just feels, it just feels weak. 
And the way that we rig our cameras out, um, we're not able to ever fully close the screen. You'll see that we'll be able to get it perpendicular to the body, which should protect it mostly, but it's still a little unsettling when we travel with these cameras to have the screen out. Once it's closed and in that position, it's like perfect, no issues at all. Um, but we are rarely able to use it in that way. So I'll show you why in a second. All right, next, um, let's get into some of the hardware here. The hardware we are using is for power, we've got IDX. This is an IDX uh, micro V-mount plate. Um, it's fantastic. We've got three or four of these laying around and you get two D-taps on the plate plus a, a USB-C port. Um, which is cool for some accessories that need that. And the package we bought came with the IDX Micro V-mount cheese plate on 15 millimeter rod um, holder or whatever. And um, these have been killer, no issues whatsoever. Um, we had a set of, or a, a kit with this and, a, and the V-mount uh, that survived that same fall we talked about earlier. So excellent, we'll put that on in a second. We've got some wooden camera stuff here. We've got a wooden camera top plate, which has one little flaw um, that we'll talk about, but for the most part has been fantastic, especially if you don't want a full cage. Uh, it's just a top plate, which is really nice. Wooden camera top handle. When we first got these, we didn't think we were gonna like them. Um, they seem a little small for the camera and you can, you can use it um, just on the camera if you want, because it has these Canon has these like threaded um, or ribbed maybe is the better word, uh, pieces on all their accessories. And so wooden camera does that too, where you can get that little threaded or ribbed thing that lines up and then it won't spin and won't twist. Um, and the, the top plate has a, that same thing on the bottom there as well. Um, we'll talk about, but we, as I was saying, we didn't think we were gonna like these. And we actually originally used the uh, original C70 top handle with this top plate. And um, and then at some point we switched for a reason I don't remember, but we were we really ended up liking this top handle. So we went with it. Um, little Canvay uh, cold shoe. I think that's what this is. Um, this is for our secondary audio, which we'll, we'll get to in a second. And a little wooden camera um, monitor mount. These I feel like are an excellent, uh, like design, maybe excellent approach and poor implementation. The, the main two issues we have with these are one, the, the Allen bolts in here will separate from the thumb nuts and and then they'll turn on their own and they'll, they'll actually thread their way out of the of the mount itself. And then you have to get a wrench and crank on it. It's not, I mean, it's not in the world, but, um, but the main issue is there's multiple really weak points on these. There's some re some spots of really thin metal and um, out of our C70 fall, which I'm not saying that companies should be making gear to where that your camera can take a massive fall and, and the gear survive. I understand not all gear will survive those things, but with our camera fall from, you know, from about yay high on a, on a slider, uh, this, because we had two identical packages uh, on our other camera, this setup, this mount was the only thing that broke. Um, so not that we don't recommend them, but I just feel like um, even some of the small rig stuff uh, is as good, if not a little better than this specific design um, and a lot cheaper too. This is the, uh, original ships with the C70 mic holder that we end up using um, and works out great. Power, the the uh, IDX V-mount micro, this is the 150 milliamp hour or watt hour, forget what it is. It's the 150. Uh, it's fantastic. Little battery check on here. You get two D-taps on the battery itself. We put Velcro on the side of ours because of uh, things you'll see when we mount it. Um, love these batteries. These are like all day plus, at least for us. We power cameras, monitors, transmitters, um, all kinds of stuff off these things. And I, we can get somewhere, what, between six and eight hours on a, on one battery. Fantastic. Got some zip ties so we can cable manage a little bit. 
For audio, um, this is sort of the star of the show when it comes to audio. This is um, a fantastic little device made by Wooden Camera. It's called the A-Box. And you'll see some Velcro on there because we mount it to our uh, V-mount battery. The A-Box gets, it's simple. It's uh, mini XLR to regular XLR. So it gets regular sized XLR females so you can plug regular XLR cables in and then your uh, male side obviously being male or you're obviously being micro um, XLR mini or micro, I don't remember which one it is. But then uh, we just leave these plugged in and then we have actual full size XLR ports. Um, I would have traded on the C70, I would have traded two mini XLR ports for like one full size XLR port would have been nice, but it works. We've got a little Deity XLR adapter. This gets, this gets our uh, D or VMic D3 Pro from 8th inch to um, XLR male. We then use this slick cable, which I can't remember where we got it, so we'll try and link it in the description. We use this little cable, uh, which is just right angle XLR, to get out of our little adapter and into the camera itself. There, um, we've got the optional, well, I'll show you why it's an option, but we've got the Rode uh, Wireless Go 2 receiver, which we end up putting on the camera. And so we end up having like boomed audio, we've got live audio, and we've got um, shotgun on camera audio. And then sometimes we use the built-in mics on the camera just for scratch audio. Ninja V, I already talked about that. Um, yeah, and then we, we've got Sigma Art stuff, and then we've got some RF stuff. So like we've got a Sigma Art 24 to 70 F2.8. We, this lens for run and gun situations lives on our cameras, or on our camera. Um, so this is sort of the B-roll lens, I guess, for out, you know, a, a day long B-roll shoot. We are almost always gonna use this lens. Um, for interview setups, the other two art lenses we have are the 35 and 85, both uh, F1.4. And for an interview, we'll typically do 35 on one, 85 on the other. Works extremely well. Um, a lens that we really like for, for this type of video, talking head that uh, would be more like traditional um, field of view is the RF 51.2. We also really like that lens because it let being F1.2 it lets us destroy the background. And if so, if we're in a scenario where the background's not super pleasing or it's cluttered or something, the 51.2 is a great tool. Obviously, we have to remove the speed booster to use that lens, but it's wildly sharp and super fast, so it works out well too. And then this angle here that you're seeing is the uh, 100 millimeter macro, and that's all the lenses we keep around. And we've yet to be in a scenario where we said, man, we wish we had that one lens. These do, these do it for us. We've had other lenses. We've had other camera systems. These just work for us. So, all right, we've got our rods on. Um, let's add our V-mount plate. And then I'm just going to back it all the way up to that, um, the, the battery in the camera. Just going to do a little test here and see if I need... This much space, that's gonna be perfect. Um, so once it's backed all the way up against there, then we're gonna tighten it down. And then I end up using these little wing nuts or thumb nuts or whatever to help cable manage. Like they form a little canal where you can run cables and sort of tuck them in. That's helpful. Um, what do we wanna do next? Let's do our top plate. Like I said, it's got the little ribbed section there that lines up with the little ribbed section in the uh, hot shoe or cold shoe. It's one of the two. <laughs> There's a hot shoe. Um, I always get I always get them mixed up. Uh, so we just got a little iron wrench here and it bolts in just one bolt. I do wish that uh, this was a two bolt top play. I wish the camera had a way to mount two bolts so that it didn't spin at all. So. Let's see here, let's see if we can crank this thing down. Yeah, so this is our first issue with the top, no, this is our only issue with the top plate. You'll see even with it cranked, there's still just the smallest amount of play. And um, it's not a big deal, It, but you know, for the price you pay for wooden camera stuff, uh, and most of their stuff's super worth it. This one, we just wish the top plate 
um, didn't shift quite as much. Can you see that? Jeremy, you getting that? Like that, I feel like that's a lot of play. Especially knowing that there's ribs in there that should be lined up and working well and then that thing's cranked down, but that's okay, works out. Then our wooden camera top handle, same thing. It's got the ribbed section on the bottom and then there's like a ribbed part on the top of the top plate. And um, every, t every other top han handle I've ever used uh, rotated. Um, this one like can't once it's in there, like, um, and then, you know, even, even though I got it as size as I can with a little thumb nut, I like to get a little, little extra crank there and then that's on there. And like I said, we didn't think we'd like these top handles, but um, they've been great. They worked out extremely well. Um, we'll go and throw this on there since we're here. Uh, these also, the little wooden camera uh, monitor arm also has a little ribbed section there and the front of the handle has that little ribbed thing. Which This is like fantastic design. Like they obviously thought this through. Like I said, just wish the uh, monitor mount was just a tad stronger. I want it to be able to, to handle a massive cam camera fall, apparently. Uh, that's my new standard. I'm just gonna crank this down. I think that's why I switched to the handles. Because of the oh yeah. Mount. Oh, that's right. Jeremy just pointed out that that's why we switched back to these top handles is because you, um, you can mount it to there. But also, um, something we like to do sometimes the, not only the handle has the little ribbed section, but also the, f the very front of the plate itself has that little rib section and a spot for the mount. And so if you want your monitor just a, a tad lower out of the way, you can mount it down here too. And even still, this handle um, makes more sense for us because being low profile, if we want to keep the the monitor down here out of the way. We don't have a big massive cannon handle blocking our view of the monitor. Cool. Um, let's go and throw our V-mount on there. It's gonna make it nice and heavy for me for the rest of the build out. Uh, box in there nice. And it's not balanced as of right now because we don't have a lens on it, but once the lens is on there, it does feel nice and balanced. Speaking of, we'll go ahead and throw our 24 to 70 on there. We do use a lot of autofocus on these cameras. That's like one of the things is, um, I hear people saying a lot, you know, like we've had Z cams, we've had Blackmagic Pocket 4K, 6K, 6K Pros, and they're killer. Um, but we often end up in scenarios where we can really benefit from uh, autofocus. And so that was a big factor when it came to deciding which camera package it was gonna, we were gonna really stick with and the C70s deliver. They, I mean, not perfect. Um, the typical, like they struggle a little bit in low light. There is something too, like people of color, especially people of color in a low light scenario. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about black folks, but like dark skin even in general in low light situations, um, the cameras can hunt quite a bit. But they've yet to be like a major issue. For us. All right, let's see what we want to do next. Next, I'll throw our uh, wireless transmitter on here. And we've got Velcro on the right side of our V-mount. And we just stick it on there. And it seems to fit and work just fine. And then we take our A-box and our A-box also has Velcro on it. This seems dumb because the, the A-box has a 15 millimeter rod hole and you would think that in this rig we could find somewhere to mount it, but we've tried it in every situation and scenario and we just don't like it anywhere. And so what we end up doing is we mount it low enough on here that you can get a tilted view of the, because used to we would just mount it all the way to the top and then you can't go past there. Uh, whereas if we mount it a little low, just to where it's like still not hitting the ground or hitting a flat surface if you need to set your camera down and then the camera, you can just tilt the screen a little and then you have like a nice side view if you're operating the camera from that side. Now we take those cables and plug them in. Well, it's a 
pop those cables off in a minute. Um, let's throw our monitor on. Ninja V, you know, we, we have Shinobis as well, but um, we've, and we've even had the Ninja V for sale for a while, but it just, oh, it did that thing I was saying it does. So like the bolt threaded out of the hole, which makes it like impossible to thread with your fingers. Technical difficulties. Um, anyway, the Ninja V, it just works. It is a solid unit, but then the, we've had these scenarios where like it's recording ability really comes in handy. Whether we're like out of space on cards and out of cards, or maybe uh, need to like, like for example, we were filming, filming an e-course not long ago and the guy just wanted to be able to use his exi existing presentation on his machine as our B angle. And uh, so we just piped audio and HDMI out of his computer into, not audio, we piped audio from the shotgun mic into the Ninja and then popped uh, pop video out of his computer into the Ninja V. And um, so we had all of his um, computer stuff on there and it worked, worked. I know there are other ways to do that, but it worked quickly for us. Um, Let's get power to some places. So this is DTAP for our transmitter, wireless transmitter. And get in. Now, like I said, the, the V-mount plate itself has two ports. So if you have more than two things that are receiving DTAP, you either need one of those like DTAP breakouts or um, like if, if your, your V-mount battery itself has DTAP on it, um, you can use that. The only problem there is then it doesn't make this super hot swappable, which as you can see, like we have stuff Velcroed to our V-mount. So it's not like we're actually hot swapping, at least from this camera anyway. Um, but in the case that we need to, we can, because all of our V-mounts have that Velcro on it ready to go. Uh, let's see if I can figure out the best cable run here. So that one is plugged into the plate itself, but I don't know if I love that, so I'm gonna try another. We built these rigs a long time ago and they've just been assembled and have not come apart in a minute. So I've forgotten how we did some of it. Okay, then we've got, this is DTAP for the camera. Um, I don't remember who makes this one, uh, but it was a brand that we trusted and so we went for it. And the camera, this goes in the spot that the AC power supply goes in. And then this one is DTAP power for the monitor. Uh, so, these looked confusing before we had one. It's like this little plate is a, a Sony NPF plate. And then it just has a cable that breaks out and can unplug from there. And then I think you can get wall adapters for this plate as well. We got cables to manage. It's gonna happen. Um, then we'll mount this little uh, cam bait adapter over here on the left side. We do, what we do with that is just throw uh, our wireless go to in there so that we're ready for live audio if we need it. Then we're gonna throw the shotgun mic holder that comes with the camera. And this is a little more low profile and it sort of comes off at an angle. We'll take eighth inch out of the D3 Pro into this and then out of this into our XLR um, a, a box, but um, you can either, you can do it that way or you can just use eighth inch out of the mic and go right into the, the eighth inch input on the camera. And we typically do that because we'll hop back and forth between whether we want our redundant audio to be lav or shotgun. To get video to our monitor um, and then to get 
the feed from the monitor to the transmitter, we use these uh, PureStone HDMI cables. We've got these on multiple lengths. They're low profile um, and work surprisingly well. We've used these for a long time and, uh, and we've yet to have issues out of them. So our process there is to come out HDMI from the camera, go HDMI in to the monitor and then out HDMI from the monitor. Which not all monitors have an HDMI out, so keep that in mind. Um, but the transmitters typically do have an output. All right, I'm gonna cable manage with this thing and we'll be back. All right, so here it is in all its glory, completely assembled. Um, to be honest, we don't always use it in this configuration. We often pull the shotgun mic off the camera because we find that we're either using Lav mics or built-in audio for scratch and then um, almost always booming in audio. Um, but we wanted to show you the sort of max options here. Um, but yeah, if you have questions about this rig, if you have thoughts that can make it better, if uh, you have any thoughts to share at all, we'd love to hear those. This is what we do um, every day of the week and we wanna hear from you guys about sort of how we could make it better. So thanks for checking out the video. Um, we're gonna be posting videos like this in the future, some camera gear stuff. We're gonna be posting behind the scenes for how we run our production company, um, tips and tricks and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, if you're interested in this type of thing, we also have a podcast called the Chroma Creative Podcast, uh, where Jeremy and I talk a lot about gear, a lot about our approach to filmmaking and how we do and why we do what we do. So check that out uh, anywhere that you listen to podcasts and we'll see you next time.